you're a fighter pilot on a long, demanding mission, your life and that of your colleagues depends on you being awake and alert all the time. There are drugs you can take to keep you focused. Would you take them? This is one of those drugs, modafinil. It's normally prescribed to promote wakefulness in people with sleep disorders. And we know the military and medical establishments have tested it to see if it will improve performance. But there's an underground movement of people taking it as a brain booster because they think it enhances their cognitive powers. I've come to Cambridge University's Centre for Brain and Mind Sciences, and in a moment, I'm going to be trying it for myself. I've taken modafinil a few times, primarily for its uh, ability to increase wakefulness and allow me to sort of uh, concentrate and, and stay awake for very extended periods of time, 20, 30 hours straight working on an essay. Laurie Pycroft is in his second year at Oxford University. He sees no real difference between taking modafinil and caffeine, though he acknowledges that sourcing these drugs is far riskier because he's getting hold of them over the internet. If I were going to obtain modafinil, for example, um, there are a variety of websites online uh, which one can access and uh, purchase you know, pills or powdered form and uh, have them delivered to one's doorstep. Um, so, you know, the reality is that it's pretty easy to, uh, to, for someone with a credit card or a bit of cash to go and obtain uh, some of these compounds. Anders Sandberg has a background in computing and neuroscience. He's a researcher at Oxford University's Future of Humanity Institute, and he talks openly about taking cognitive enhancing drugs. The question is how big this advantage is. I'm actually suspecting that it's smaller than uh, I would like it to be, and in that case there might not be much of an ethical problem here. Uh, that's some research that has to be done actually to check how much advantage would there be. Uh, there is also the question whether the students actually are using these drugs to the best, uh, uh, in the best way. Uh, after all, uh, just staying up all night uh, studying might not be the smartest way because you need the sleep to consolidate your memory. Some cognitive enhancers, such as Ritalin, are classed as controlled drugs. Modafinil is not. It's not illegal to buy it online, but it is illegal to supply it without a prescription. We've all heard about students drinking coffee or taking caffeine tablets to stay awake all night and cram for an exam or finish an essay. But now there's evidence they're taking something more potent, though there's little hard data about who's taking what. We conducted an online survey of Newsnight viewers and readers of New Scientist magazine. Of the 716 responses, 38% said they'd taken a cognitive enhancing drug. Of those, nearly 40% said they'd bought it online. 92% say they would try it again. The survey gives us only an anecdotal snapshot of the world of smart drugs, but it shows that already there's real concern that these drugs could lead to a two-tier society. What it's telling us is that there are people out there who are not just willing but able to source these drugs and to take them. And I think they're a little like early adopters of technology. Um, maybe the whole world isn't taking them, but there is a certain section of society who, who are. That raises all kinds of interesting uh, social and ethical issues. Uh, quite aside from safety, um, we need to start thinking about whether people should be allowed to take these drugs if they're taking exams, for example, or if they're at university. Um, is it a bit like uh, performance enhancing drugs in, in sports, which we don't allow people to, to use? I'm back in Cambridge to find out the effect a cognitive enhancing drug has on me. There are safety concerns and we've been through a sort of questionnaire to make sure to be safe for you uh, today. In James Rowe is a neurologist and part of a research team testing cognitive enhancers like modafinil okay, so to see if they help people with Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's. In this capsule I've put either modafinil or a dummy pill, the placebo. And I know which is in it, but you won't know, and nor will the person doing the tests today. Okay. So if you'd like to take that. Here we go then. <laughs> Here we go. So how do we actually conduct those tests? So this is our second trip to the Cambridge unit. I'm about to take this tablet. Again, I don't know if it's the placebo or the real modafinil. 
some of the stuff will say on a paper and pencil basis. And now I've just got to wait for a couple of hours for the drug to take effect. Well, I think it's so important because obviously... Professor Sahakian is also part of the Cambridge team working with cognitively impaired people. But her most recent research showed that sleep-deprived surgeons perform better on modafinil. She thinks these drugs could play a far wider role in society. I do think we've undervalued them. I mean, the, Ameri the Academy of Medical Sciences report in 2008 showed that even a small 10% improvement in a memory score could lead to a higher A-level grade or degree class. And that's a big improvement. And as a society, we could perhaps move forward if we all you know, had a form of cognitive enhancement that was safe. Taking drugs to enhance cognition may be limited by the power of the brain itself. But there are those who think we could go further by adding whole dimensions to our brains artificially. Some area, the, you know, electric shock across the top. You have to get used to that. Back in 1998, Kevin Warwick became the world's first cyborg, part human, part robot. He had a chip implanted in his arm, then wired up to his nervous system. His wife had a similar operation, and theirs became the first human nervous systems to communicate electronically over the internet. So um, sh show me what you can do with a magnet. Oh, uh, this is literally just nominal, but you can just pull around. His like PhD students are still working on similar lines. Ian has had magnets stitched into the ends of his fingers to see what it's like to have a sixth magnetic sense. And Professor Warwick's latest project is a mini rat-like robot controlled by human brain cells. With actual human brain. He thinks human enhancement is challenging the way we think of our own limitations and how we reach out to others. We've already achieved with my implants our nervous system to nervous system communication, a sort of telegraphic communication. Clearly the next step is brain to brain basics of thought communication. The big advantages of that are we won't have to communicate in this sort of mechanical speech form, but we'll be able to communicate in terms of images, ideas, emotions, feelings. Tremendously exciting future. So this is the second time we're going to do the test. They'll all be okay. the same as before. Okay. In Cambridge, so I'm about to do a bit of okay. self-experimentation of my own. In the first task, you're going to see a square appear in the middle of the screen. I have to complete two sets of computer games over an hour and a half to test my powers of memory, strategy and planning and to see if modafinil has any effect on me. Okay, so if I said one, two, three, you would then say to me three, two, one. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, so the first one is five, one, one five. So that's everything done. So the last thing to do is just to rate how you're feeling. So how are you feeling? Um, I suppose physically I'm feeling more myself. Um, so if I had to guess, I'd say that last time was when I was given the modafinil. But it's, it's really very marginal. We'll find out if I was right in a minute. In our pressurised society, we might be tempted to pop a pill to achieve the best we can, the fastest we can. But what if there were drugs that could make us kinder, more considerate, more moral? Scientists are about to start tests on a range of hormones that could do just that. They call it moral enhancement. So one could certainly imagine, uh, for example, reducing the testosterone level. Uh, because testosterone uh, generally tends to make people slightly more aggressive and also make us less likely to watch faces. So we become less interested in trying to figure out what others think when we're high in testosterone. Uh, and we also become more risk-taking, which might be very problematic in certain situations uh, on the stock market or the sports field. Bioethicist Professor John Harris supports the idea of cognitive enhancement but sees risks in dabbling with people's values. Somebody isn't morally enhanced because they're necessarily disposed to do things of which others would approve. They're morally enhanced, it seems to me, 
if they're better capable of making moral judgments, and that is to say better capable of considering of al alternatives, realizing the consequences of their actions, realizing the wider context in which they act. Now, in fact, most of that is likely to be more achievable through cognitive enhancement than through moral enhancement. Hi. <laughs> Can I chat about the results? Moment of truth. Yes. <laughs> I have to ask you, can you guess, can you tell me which day you thought it's very hard. I think it's quite marginal. But if I was forced to guess, I would say that the first time was when I had the real modafinil. That's very interesting. You're not correct. Oh, Today, right. you had the modafinil. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, that's, that is interesting, because I would, I would definitely say I feel more myself today, <laughs> which is very strange. Also, on the test, when it came to planning, trying to move those balls around on the screen to, to match the, the two displays. The one that I really don't like. Which you found very difficult. Yeah. Um, in fact, you did very well, and you did even better today on the modafinil. On the memory recognition task, my score went up from 8 out of 10 to 9 out of 10, a 10% absolute increase in the score. But what we've seen today when you're taking modafinil are some very striking improvements in, in memory, for example, planning abilities and impulsivity. It's human nature to want to push against our limitations. But what about the risks? My tests with modafinil were medically supervised and involved just one dose. But with these drugs, we just don't know the long-term effects on the brain. I think it would be good if the government would look at this problem together with the pharmaceutical industry and say, you know, if you conduct the studies to show long-term safety and efficacy in healthy humans, we will let you, we will regulate these drugs in the normal way so that people can get access to safe drugs. And they can go and perhaps see their GP and say, you know, it, may I take this drug? And if safety can be proven, some see no reason to hold back. It's difficult to think of um, a, a plausible place to set an upper limit to intelligence or cognitive powers. And if we can improve our cognitive powers, and of course by doing so, shorten our learning time and uh, allow education to operate from a higher base, I think it might be not only good for individuals actually, but um, cost effective for society. We can increase the power of our brain through exercise and sleep and diet. But the attraction of a pill that makes you smarter won't go away. It might mean a difference of just a few percent now. But what if that was 50%, 100%? Would we still say no? Well, with us now is the Professor of Clinical Neuropsychology at Cambridge, Barbara Sahakian, whom you saw in Susan's film, and the author of Why Simple Solutions Don't Work in a Complex World, Brian Appleyard. Um, Professor, do you think these pills should just be available to anyone who wants them? Well, they can't be available at the moment because they haven't done the um, long-term safety studies for healthy people, so they'd be quite you know, dangerous to just make them available. They really do need um, some studies done. Right, so they're currently, they currently shouldn't be available because we don't know what exactly. the long-term con consequences and may be. And also, some younger people are taking them, and the brain is still in development well into adolescence, young So you young would say adulthood. young people shouldn't take them? Well, if you, if you, obviously, if you have a neuropsychiatric condition like attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, yeah. you may well need the drugs. But, but if mean, you're health a healthy child, um, you know, your brain's in development. We don't know what the effects are. The healthy are. young man that we saw there at Oxford University, mm. clearly very smart, mm. uh, claimed that these pills enhanced his performance. Yeah. He shouldn't be taking them, in your judgment, because we don't know what the long-term consequences well, may be. Well, we've done studies at Cambridge University, and we do find improvements in, in healthy people. But we do these acute studies. Now, he's taking them long term. He's neglecting his sleep. It's a very, and he's buying them over the internet, which is a very dangerous way okay. to get hold of drugs. Right. Leaving aside the question of whether they're reliably sourced, supposing they can be reliably mm. manufactured, mm. and furthermore, that there is no long term damage caused by extensive use of these things. Brian Appleyard, you're a clever guy. I mean, wouldn't you rather be cleverer? I don't know what that means. I, th I, th I think there's a, there's a real confusion here, um, especially mm -hmm. in the use of the word enhancement. Uh, I mean, you can see it most clearly when people talk about moral enhancement. You know, uh, morally I was going to come to that in a second, <laughs> okay, but go but, on. Well, I mean, the word enhancement, I mean, we only have one yardstick of, of you know, human consciousness, which is human consciousness. If you're saying beyond human, you're going to enhance it, 
what would it be like? Would your enhanced human be like Osama bin Laden or Mother Teresa? The, there is a lot of ideology in, these sort of, in this sort of talk, which is unacknowledged. Do you think society would benefit, assuming, let's leave aside the mm. question of sourcing, mm. let's leave aside the question of long-term yeah. damage, assuming they're safe, assuming they're reliably manufactured, would society be better off? I think that, um, you know, if you talk about improving people's memory um, and, and, and their ability to plan, problem solve, I mean, we have showed in a recent study with Imperial College that sleep-deprived doctors do much better on this, and they have much lower side effects than, say, taking caffeine, coffee. Do you think these things should be available on the NHS? Well, that's a, that's a different discussion altogether because that uh, has well, to do with the, the cost. Well, s I mean, certainly for uh, neuropsychiatric patients and people with brain injury, yes, I do. Yeah, ordinary people. Um, on the NHS? Yeah. Uh, well, I think there's a difference between making somebody, uh, helping them to be normalized, and then um, enhancement is a different order. Absolutely. So when we get to the question of enhancement, you're in favor of those who can pay should be able to do it? Well, this is uh, an interesting social and ethical problem because, as was brought up earlier on, the, on that uh, video, because um, it, is, it is important that we make uh, a access. But what I would say, Jeremy, is that there are other ways. There's exercise, there's education, and these are great ways to boost cognition. So we don't always have to You don't have a problem with people taking lots of exercise and the rest of it? Absolutely not. No. But the, so you know, the problem is specifically with what the what chemical reactions may be taking place as a consequence of taking medication? Well, there are two, there are two issues. One is the consequences, and yeah. one is, is it a good thing in a wider sense, in the wider sense of mm. the affecting what it is to be human. I mean, uh, I don't think we have the faintest idea what enhancing a human being is. And I, I, I think that convincing people that they can live their normal lives better in some way by taking this chemical is a step too far. I mean, there's, a, there's gradations. I mean, obviously, we enhance people in all sorts of ways. We wear glasses, we have operations, we take exercise. These are enhancements. Education is enhancement. But, you know, there's a line at which you start saying, you know, we will, you will, me you will um, take a drug all the time in order to be a different superior being is very dubious, it seems to me, because it's, it's, it's taking us away from uh, the, the social norms with which, with which we... Presumably you could get circumstances under which employers would say, yes, I'll give you the job, but you've got to take this pill all the time. Exactly. And I, I can guarantee you that human beings are being what they are. They'd use these drugs to produce the perfect soldier, for example. Um, I mean, they, these would be used in that way. There's al already coercion. I, um, frequently when I speak to students, some of them say to me, you know, I don't want to take these drugs, but other students are taking them, and I feel pressure upon me to take them. So this issue of coercion is, is a very big one. That, that's like an argument for compulsory drunkenness or something. That's just peer pressure. Well, it, it is peer pressure, but um, I, I know that Nature did an online survey, and they got a lot of people responding. Well, these and online surveys would... are worthless, aren't they? Because it's not a controlled sample. <laughs> it isn't a controlled sample. Well, then why are you citing right. it? Well, I think because the interesting feature is the issue of the coercion. When asked if well. children should be given these drugs if they're healthy, most of the people said no. When asked if they would give the drug to their child, if other children in the classroom were taking these drugs, they said yes. So the, no. the issue of coercion comes up again. So also, it's only interesting in that regard. Do you also believe uh, the question that was cited in the film there that Brian's already referred to, that there's a capacity for moral enhancement? I, I think it's very uh, difficult to discuss what people mean by moral enhancement, at least with but cognition, we have objective tests. We can say whether your memory's improved and by how much. We can talk about whether your sure. planning's improved. This is a much more difficult ethical Well, it's issue. nonsense, isn't it? I mean, moral enhancement is the capacity, surely, to, to make a judgment based upon your natural capabilities. Well, neuroscientists would also talk about, for instance, cognitive control, being able to control your impulses and your behavior. So there are other forms that are perhaps more easy to, to measure. Okay, we've got to leave it there, unfortunately. Uh, tomorrow morning's front page is uh, Silvia Berlusconi's on the front page. Uh, with